up and on here a moment. So here is probably the truth is somewhere in between. But up and on here a moment is important. So the meson cloud in this thing is probably very important in the, in the nuclear structure. <clears throat> All right, so let me summarize this part. It's the momentum fraction of the quarks. Both beta and C and glue have been ca calculated for a quench lattice. The glue angular moment, uh, moment is fraction 31%. The, um, the GA, the quark spin is in the experiments, the glue angular moment is 25%. And the quark albumin moment is large, what, 50% or something, all right? So these are, let me remind you, these are the quenched results so far. So we need to move on to dynamical formula, large lattices, to see to get very more quantitative. Here is a qualitative or semi-qualitative and most. Can you ask? Yeah, please. Because you identified this. Uh, one can probably play with the with the parameters and get that, but but then the quality back model doesn't have glue. If you ignore glue, you can probably get some pictures like that. Remember, remember the uh, much, the little back model. I know how much the quality back model. I how much does Kyle Kraft contribute to the? I don't know. I have, maybe have to either look up their paper or talk or send an email to Tony Thomas. Uh, remember the little back model that you have of quarks inside, which you know, depending on how the radius is, the outside is pi out inside the quark, right? Depending on the radius, the the actual vector current is divided this and up. I suppose you can change the boundaries so that more does on the quark or quark does on. So there's something there maybe a tunable parameter to get that, I suppose. <coughs> Well, let me put it this way. When Tony Thomas, mm -hmm. if he gives it a summer, he will reproduce it. <laughs> okay. When Tony Thomas, the way that I understand, if you give it this number, he will reproduce it. <laughs> okay. Let me, let's make a because it's a question part summation. Let me take a, a page from uh, Pablo Picasso. Right. In 1945, I guess most of you are not born yet. Uh, he was commissioned to draw a picture, a boom. You know, in French, it's a little boom. You want to look up the web, this is what you look for. So he started out with a very complicated, realistic picture for the boom. And then he started to do reduction. Right? Uh, the first stage is, uh, looks like this, it has a geometrical shape. And it will come to the 11th stage, it's this. That's where it showed up in the, in, in the, in the book. All right? So the lesson there is that if you capture the essential features, the ball, you can get that. So, so far we have very complicated dynamic fermions, car symmetry, and so on and so forth. Here we're doing the crunch approximation. Of course, our job is to reverse the process and try to get a, a small, as much detail as possible to get a realistic uh, picture of the, the proton spin components from, uh, from the uh, realistic lattice calculations. Again, we have to do this so far. We, have, we plan to do this three lattice. And hopefully, someday we'll carry out these two lattices to get a better picture. Now let me let me show you a little bit of the controversies of the um, gauge invariant problems. Now a few years ago, uh, Chen Xiaozong Chen and Goldman Wong and uh, so on, they showed that um, there's a way to, um, uh, there used to be thinking that in, 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 in uh, Xiaodong Ji's uh, claim that you have new total angular moment which you cannot, like a quark, decompose that into uh, a spin and angular moment to the orbital angular for the group. But these people claim that you can. So that, that started a lot, of, uh, a lot of controversies in the gauge invariant way. Of course, Jaffe and Manohar showed that you cannot do it. You can only do it like home frame. Now, um, so far, um, G's uh, derivation is this one. Now, recent development says that we was, uh, the Wakabatsu claimed that you do it. And it has shown that the one loop normalization of this has to be dependent on the gauge. Uh, but Shandong has a new formulation that the operator that uh, Shang Song Ji and uh, Wakamatsu seems to be correct, but you have to do it in infinite moment in frame. And so this is still under study. Uh, if you want to hear more, uh, to you can give your talk, I think, on this issue. All right. Uh, one specific issue that I want to discuss is a leader at some time. Claim that we don't need to require the operator to be gauge invariant. 
as long as the matrix element gives you the variance, okay. So you propose that the canonical form is a partial, partial derivative for the moment and it's good enough. But we know the partial derivative is not gauge invariant. And there is a Elitzer theorem which shows that in two carefully matrix elements or any physical things, if you have a gauge non invariant quantity and you integrate over the gauge group, elements that should vanish. So um, at one weekend, we went and just did the calculation over one weekend and show that x for the u and d, this is what we look at as function of time. You, you're somewhere in this, you're supposed to look for a plateau to get a number, all right? So u here and d here for the momentum. But when you take off, when you switch off the gauge fields, put that to 1, this is what she got, 0. So that's the explicit proof if you don't have a gauge invariant quantity, this is what you get. <coughs> right, finally, let me uh, summarize. This is that we are engaged in a, um, a program <coughs> which can calculate connected and disconnected assertions for many of the physical quantities, uh, physical observables that help the experiments and so on. And we are also at a stage of calculating the glue operators. It's constructed, we know how to construct the, uh, the field tensor, E and B fields, uh, and then correlate that with the nucleons. So we can study many of the moments and the trace anomaly and so on for the nuclear mass. The next one, we'll find out where does the mass of the proton come from. Right? That's just equally uh, important to find out where the mass of the proton come from. Where do we come from? Right? Not just the Dark matter is more important than looking for one, one, one quarter, one fifth of the mass in the one, universe. Sorry? This one, this one, and it seems the mass of the core. Spontaneous for the core mass? Oh, no, the core mass is small, the, 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 the is heavy. I thought it's from the trace anomaly. What? About 80 90 percent from the trace anomaly. We grew well. You have two ways of looking at it. Okay? Yeah. One is decompose the Hamiltonian into one and so on. The other one is looking at the trace anomaly. From the trace anomaly, you can't even say my turn is small. Yes, there's no small. Small. Speaking, I don't think that you can have all the, all the mass. The excess, the side by side, and then you say it's small scale. Yeah, it, the, the, it's not spontaneous symmetry breaking, but rather the breaking of conformal symmetry. Maybe also picking the. Component. I think it's more. Yeah, but there was a write up by somebody who, who claimed that they were looking at the trace anomaly. Channel was at an Alice and uh, Hills. I think Hills has a memoir uh, 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 written up when Nikhil Mann was 80 years birthday. And they were discussing this, and he was sent out to the uh, printed room to print out copy. When he came back, Gil Mann simply figured that out. This is a breaking of conformal symmetry. <laughs> you have a trace anomaly. So the core mass is so small, right? The mass is so small, they all come from. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, I have asked about checking the sum rule explicitly. What does it take to do this? Check in the sum rule? Right. You use it to constrain one of the unknown parameters, right? Yeah. Well, like two. the greenwashing constant. Of oh, two realization constants. Right. Two sum so constant. presumably, if that can be computed explicitly, then you check the sum rule explicitly. How? Yeah, but you worry that there's already a square? Just for checking, if you can compute everything independently. What is if you compute something with five percent off? Oh, say again. Five percent off. Remember, realization cost is one point zero five, one point zero five. Okay. So a five percent off from um, seventy five would be one or half. But that part it, it's not computed explicitly. You use the sum rule. No, no, we compute it explicitly. Oh, okay, okay. We compute all so the terms. So you can check the sum rule. We compute all, all all the terms. We modify these the realization count rule to get exactly one half. Okay. Now the question is, there is a, something which I can discuss with you later, is that I don't know what I should impose the sum rules after mixing, <laughs> what, after mm -hmm. you do the MSR scheme, or before doing the MSR scheme. Because if you have uh, something which has normalized, and you have this relation in, in a particular scheme, uh, then you have a, the off-diagonal matrix cell is one minus something else. So you guarantee that if this is normalized, right, after the 
makes it a student, not mobilized, but if they are sub, the sum is preserved. But when I do the mixing from the gauge operator, for the light dust operator, then as far as I don't know what that's carried. So that's that's a question I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, about the proton speed of the yeah. process, okay. Yeah. And now you find out uh, there's almost fifty percent coming from the uh, orbital. Oh, but this in the cringe, uh, so this is this mostly come from the disconnected. Uh, right, 100%, uh, almost 100%. 100%, yeah. 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 So, um, but if you are calculating the cringe calculation, okay, so, so, um, yeah, what do we expect? Okay, change, does, how, how much this changes? Yeah, when you I do the dynamic calculation. I, I don't know how much. Yeah, because then, then the picture is completely different. Because if, if, if all, suppose if all everything add up to be one, then this part, they say, becomes smaller or larger. Um, when you include the, the one thing you could, we already checked is that for the connected surgeons, uh -huh. the conclusion, you know, the same, 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 same as, as a dynamic from here, right? Uh -huh. Zero. Okay, now the other thing is to glue twenty five percent, thirty percent. You know, it's hard to tell how how precisely the glue calculation is. Mm -hmm. But for the quark spin calculation, experimentally, it's a molar saddle, but we get a number which is in agreement with experiments. But there is a lot, new lattice calculation from QCDSF, Bali, and so on. They claim when they calculate the strangeness mm -hmm. for the for the exovector current, that's very very small, much smaller than we got. For Punch mm -hmm. So we are working on it now with, um, I, I, because I doubt we can get a precise number of um, calculate the axial vector current. It's better to calculate the, you know, anom the, 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 uh, the anomalous one of it. Yes. So, so that, that's, a, that's an issue we need to use that. Yeah, since you use the fusion from you, and then that also has the issue of the color extrapolation and all these things. Everything, yeah, right. So, yeah. True. That's, that's, that's what I would have at this point. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? Yeah. You just see any? Right. Okay, if there's no more questions, let's thank you. Right. Thank you.